All right, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 2003 Honda Civic Hybrid. Up front is a 1.3 liter inline four as well as a hybrid battery system. And down below is a five speed manual transmission. Now I am super excited to be driving this here Civic Hybrid for two main reasons. First of all, it's very unique and very different. This was the first year of the Civic Hybrid, and I think it really kicked off something special. But the other reason is the fact that it's manual. It's a manual hybrid, and I've always thought that manual hybrids are very funky, very weird, and so let's see how this one stacks up. Let's get back to that hybrid drive system. Like I said, the gasoline engine is a 1.3 liter inline four. Now I will put the horsepower and torque up on the screen of the entire system and you're not looking at a lot this thing does not make a lot of power however i'll put the epa's estimated fuel economy up on the screen but the owner told me if he really pushes it he can get into the low 50 miles per gallon which is insane even by modern standards 18 years later and that's really the whole point of this car is to get amazing fuel economy and Honda, yet again, hit the nail directly on the head. Now, a couple other things about the hybrid system that I found really interesting. First of all, the 1.3 liter gasoline inline four engine has two spark plugs per cylinder. Now, we see this nowadays on like Hemis and rotary engines have two per housing, but the Honda Civic did this back in 2003 and the vehicle actually has the ability to change the timing between both spark ignitions, which is very, very interesting. So it can change when the spark happens independent of each other in order to give you the best explosion inside the engine you can physically get. That is really, really smart thinking from Honda and very unique. And the other thing I wanted to talk about is I had a chat with the owner just before filming this and he made a very interesting observation. Yes, this car has a hybrid system with the battery and the batteries do tend to go bad after 10 to 15 years. However, this car at almost 200,000 miles had the battery replaced by a previous owner or has been really well kept because this battery is still chugging along. But if the battery were to go bad, all you would have to do is unplug the battery and you'd be fine. The car has a separate dedicated starter motor. And so if you were to just unplug the battery, this would just be a regular inline four cylinder car. Would it be very slow? Yes, it would be incredibly slow, scarily slow, but you would be able to drive it. And the reason I bring that up is that can't be said about the Toyota Prius. In the Toyota Prius, when your battery goes dead, if it will not hold a charge, you are out of luck. No ifs and or buts, you're just done. It's not the case here with the Civic Hybrid, and I think that's really important now given the fact that this is 18 years old and you're gonna be running into battery issues. I'll do a little uh, acceleration test for you. Now that didn't look intense on screen and in person, uh, it also wasn't intense. However, it's a lot more peppy than the Insight. Honda Insight has a three cylinder. This has a four cylinder, baby, and you feel it. Honestly, I, I'm surprised at how quick and spry and nimble this car is. This car handles really well, which is partially helped out by the fact that the battery packs are actually in the back actually gives this car better weight distribution, if you can believe that. And I'm having fun, like I said, paired to it, five-speed manual transmission. It's a little different to drive because you don't really get much engine sound and not a whole lot to go off of in terms of hearing and sensory sort of driving experience. And that's the same with the Insight. The manual Insight that I reviewed, you can't really rely on your hearing in order to shift like I do with most manual cars, but the shifter feels fantastic. I mean, really, really good shifter. It's a Honda, of course it has a really good shifter. Last but not least, of course, the Civic is front wheel drive. So let's talk about the interior. We have a couple interesting things to talk about. Well, in front of me, I have three main gauges. On the left is my tachometer, as well as the auto stop light and shift light. So this car will tell you when to shift. It'll tell you shift up, but interestingly, it'll tell you when to shift down. Very interesting, and I don't think I've ever seen that in a car before as a shift down light. But then I also have a little light for auto start stop. Yes, this car will turn off at stoplights. Something that I learned to hate 
in the late 2010s was actually here in 2003 and I didn't even know it. Then in the center, I get a pretty traditional Honda speedometer, as well as I get a couple little readouts at the bottom for like MPG and stuff like that. This is a commuter car through town, and even through town just commuting, the owner Isaac has averaged 39.7 miles to the gallon commuting through stop and go traffic. That is impressive. But then on the right, I have a very interesting gauge and I love it. I love that about the Honda Insight is that it had an interesting gauge and so does the Civic. The Civic has interesting gauges as well, but it's a little bit on a smaller scale, but it's off to the right here and I have my fuel, battery, charge assist, and my coolant temperature. Tons of great information in that gauge, and I'm really glad that I get it. On the steering wheel, I don't have any buttons besides the cruise control off to the right. And then to the left of me, I have my defroster, cruise control on and off, and then my power mirror adjustments. Then on the door, I have my lock and unlock up top, and then I have my power mirrors. Moving into the center, I have two climate control vents, a swapped out radio because every radio from the early 2000s was terrible, so here we go. And then I have climate controls off the left, something very interesting, again, for 2003 on a more basic car, I do get auto climate controls. I have auto fan speed as well as auto location, which is very interesting. Then I have a couple more buttons for AC, recirculating, and econ. Econ is for the AC because running this car with air conditioning really does cut down on the fuel economy. It cuts down on the efficiency of the engine. And so that button will sort of help you justify and figure out when to use AC, when to not, to get the best fuel economy possible. Down on the center console, we have a couple dead switches and a 12 volt outlet. And then we have our cup holders. So we will do a big friggin' bottle test here in the Civic Hybrid. And unfortunately it fails. I really didn't expect it to pass. This is a smaller car. The Honda Civic is more of an economy car as it is. And so nothing really too crazy or unexpected in that respect. <laughs> Hey, I hope you're enjoying all the videos that I made down here in Florida and Georgia for you guys, but I wanted to take a quick moment to thank our sponsors. Our first sponsor is Fixed. Fixed is a OBD2 Bluetooth sensor that hooks up right to your smartphone. It'll tell you your engine codes, it'll tell you how to fix it, where to fix it, issues that might come up. It's really, really helpful and it'll even work on a vehicle like this, a 1996 240SX. This was the first year that OBD2 was offered and will work with any car after 1996. If you are looking Looking to sell your used car, please click the link in the description below. Go to cashforcars.com. They will give you a free quote and pick up your vehicle in less than 24 hours. It is the easiest way, I promise you, to sell your used vehicle today. You don't have to deal with Craigslist or Facebook or whatever the heck that is. You could sell your vehicle in less than 24 hours and get a free quote and help out the channel by clicking the link for Cash for Cars in the description below. Now, the shifter looks good. However, it looks very economy, it looks very basic, but again, this car is almost 200,000 miles and I can still read the shifter, which can't be said about most automobiles at that mileage point. So, Honda build quality still sticking around on the shifter. Then I have the handbrake, little cubby, things like that, nothing really too crazy on the center console. The seats are decently comfortable. However, my favorite part about them is I grew up, you know, a couple neighbors had Honda Accords from this era. And I don't know, it's this older style material, this late 90s, early 2000s material on the seats just really brings nostalgia back for me. And so it's always cool to see that. But speaking of seats, we do have back seats. So let's go do a back seat review. All right, so we're in the back of the 2003 Honda Civic Hybrid. Couple things to note back here. First of all, the actual space back here is not bad at all. I'm pretty comfortable. Headroom is good. I'm about 5'11". I have about an inch, inch and a half up above my head, which is fantastic. Leg room is good. However, the underside of the driver's seat is actually blocked off. So I can't put my toes under the driver's seat like I normally would. So it feels tighter than it is, but the passenger seat doesn't have that issue. So you can sit more comfortably on the passenger side. I have power windows. I don't get a center console or anything like that. I have a speaker over my shoulder. Pretty basic stuff, nothing really too crazy or interesting besides that lack of under seat space. But now let's go take a look at the trunk and then we'll talk about the looks. All right, so we're around the back of the Civic Hybrid, and honestly, pretty good space for being a hybrid. Now, like I said, the batteries are actually like behind the rear seat, 
and they're sort of down low, but the fact that the batteries are back here and I still have this much space is really, really impressive and really, really nice. I honestly would not even notice that this was any different from a regular Honda Civic trunk. Decently spacious. If you're gonna move in and out of college, you know, go to a sports game, whatever, you're gonna have plenty of space back here. And I'm really happy to see that with the hybrid drivetrain. Now we gotta talk about the looks and a couple things to note for the hybrid. First of all, the main thing is that top antenna. The high voltage system doesn't allow for the antenna to be attached to the windshield like in normal cars of the era. So they had to stick it right dab on the top middle. So if you see that on a older style Civic, it's probably a hybrid. The spoiler also came standard on the hybrid where it was optional on other vehicles. The wheels are hybrid specific and the front bumper of this car is a one year only hybrid bumper. I mean, the bumper doesn't do anything for the hybrid drivetrain, but it only came on the hybrid models and it only came on the 2003 hybrid model. So if you see the front bumper like this where the grill is kind of weird, it's a hybrid and a 2003 one at that. But now let's do a walk around of the rest of the car and honestly, besides those points, it's very standard Honda. I think it's subtle. I think it looks decent. I'm not turned off by it. I'm not turned on by it. It's a car that has looks. And so since it is a car and this is a car review, Let's get my final thoughts out there. What do I think of this car? Well, first of all, let's talk about the negatives. I like ending on a high note, so let's get the negatives out of the way. Your hybrid battery is probably going to go bad. If it hasn't already, it probably will. So, something to look out for. Can you get a new hybrid battery put in? Yes. Is it pricey? Yes. Can you do it at home in your garage? Maybe, but should you? No, but that's it. And you're gonna run into that with every single hybrid you look at from this era. It's not like the Prius is any better. Actually, arguably, like I said at the top of the video, the Prius is much worse. And so let's talk about the positives. Well, speaking of the Prius, you can't get a Prius in manual, and this comes in manual. If you prefer manual transmissions, this is the way to go. This feels a lot better shifting wise than the Honda Insight. I think because the Honda Insight was a three cylinder and so gutless that you really didn't have any torque. I mean, this makes a little bit more torque than the Insight and a little torque goes a long way. A little torque was actually my rapper name in high school. But this car is so unique and honestly, I'm really enjoying driving it. The owner said, oh, it's slow. It's just from A to B. And no, it won't, you know, beat the doors off a GTR, but I'm having fun rowing through the gears. I'm having a fun time driving this car. It handles and drives like a Civic, but then I look down and I'm getting, right now on average, my average just went up to 40 miles per gallon. I've been driving through a neighborhood, stop and go, stop and go. It's really hard on an engine, but not this one, not this one. You'll be lucky to see a fuel station once a month. And again, I cannot find production numbers, but I can't imagine that these were particularly high. Reviewing this car in 2021 is pretty interesting because Ford right now is getting praised. They're getting praised for their hybrid pickup truck, first of its kind on mass scale. The F-150 is the best selling vehicle in America and it's finally a hybrid. Well, you could get a hybrid back in the day from Honda. 18 years ago, and it'll get better fuel economy than pretty much anything else. I think what I'm starting to see and starting to notice is that this was kind of a golden era of hybrids because they were still in their infancy where they were basic enough where you could still drive them like normal cars. But also this was before cars started to get bigger again with crash safety and they don't have the added weight of parking sensors. They don't have the added weight of blind spot monitoring and rear view cameras and big infotainment screens. Infotainment screens are heavy. And so with all of that shed weight or original lack thereof weight, these cars are light and you can sip on gas. That's the biggest thing. No weight and a hybrid system is the winning combination and that's exactly what this car has. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to Isaac for letting me review his hybrid Civic. This is just, it's one of a kind. I don't know if I'll ever see one again. And if I do in traffic, I'll be looking for that antenna and I'll get excited because I know how great these cars are. But again, thank you to Isaac. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video and subscribe if you would like to. Take care guys.